tell me a bit more about the surrender to India. Because, I mean, I always tell people that go to India, and I, I, I've just backpacked around there a couple of times, if you try to control it, you will have a terrible time. And yeah. I've heard, I heard the story, and I know I was one of those guys in the airport saying, where's my bag, or get me to the front of the line. You know, I, I, I completely get that. But as soon as, like, I, I actually, I've traveled alone there, and I've traveled with someone, and I found it so much easier to travel alone because then you don't even have to answer to anyone yeah. about what you're doing and make any plans, and you kind of just go, completely surrender and go with the flow. And I found once I, like, surrendered and realized, you know, I don't have to be anywhere tonight. Yeah. I don't have to do anything tonight. I don't need to be anywhere at any time. I'm just going to sit, you know. It was funny, that shop behind the um, Taj Mahal you had, I spent like two days behind the Taj Mahal. Like I found out you could walk behind and there was all these street kids back there. Yeah. And I just hung out with them, just hanging out, talking to them and having a great time. And it, you had a shot from back there. I don't know if it was, if you got back there, if it was a B, a, a B unit, but it was just beautiful. It was, um, it just really captured it. And I, and I think, you know, get it, you just got that spirit of just letting go, you know, which was it. So how'd you do it? How were you able to? I thought, you could, I thought you could tell straight away that that was the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I thought if, if we Did you fight it at first, we, or did you get it immediately? Well, I was helped by the fact, and I'd love to talk to you about as well about Fountain, I was helped by the fact that I'd done this sci-fi film before it, which is about the exact opposite, is about so much control, it's unbelievable. Right. Precision and control. I'm oh, sorry, we did two space movies, and then we both did two, like, two anti-OCD movies. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's true. But I, because I'd done that, I realised I, I wanted a contrast anyway right. for my own sanity, but I also realized that I should embrace it. And they love that, the, the Indians, because I think they, make, they, they, re, they do get a lot of people coming there trying to kind of muscle their way in right. and do their thing there. Right. And they just laugh at you, really. Right. And they, they used to say, I'll bet there's loads of cows in your film. They'd look at me and say, there'll be loads of cows, won't they, wandering around <laughs> everywhere. And I thought, I must make sure there's no cows in the film anywhere. And there are a couple in the background. But Why you do you not want any cows? Because they always, they always accuse Westerners of putting cows in their cow. films. <laughs> but there's just cows wandering around everywhere. Right, which right, there right. are, of there course. Are, yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. unnaturally focused on by Westerners. Right. Whereas for the Indian, it's just part of life. The right, cows right, walk right, through. Right, it's right. like nothing, really. And we go, wow. Look, there's a cow walking down the street. So tell us about the fountain and about changing from that to it was let it was less of a change for me I w it was less of a conscious reaction to the to the fountain I, I really I enjoyed you know that um, the anal retentiveness of, of that type of filmmaking yeah. I really enjoyed visual effects I just for me the first three movies um, was kind of a chapter that climaxed with the fountain and I just didn't know where to go stylistically I kind of like perfected what I was trying to do in those first two films and I was sort of done and um, so for myself it, I had run the course and I just wanted to try something completely different and um, I was just excited I mean a lot of it came out of actually me dating a actress and she was sort of really studying this idea of being in the moment and not knowing what was going to happen when yeah. action and cut happened and it was kind of inspiring because as directors we get really very few moments of actually being unconscious. If yeah. we write, we can get do it, and then between action and cut, while we're channeling an actor, you're kind of, you know, you have to focus, and nothing else matters. Um, and even that, there's usually shit going on that you're yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. about, and you can but rarely you're tune your in, you're half blind. Yeah. But every once in a while, an actor's doing something amazing, and the set is calm enough that it's just, you're there. So I just wanted to try to do that for, and just that because it's my kind of it's the best part of the process in a lot of ways is between action and cut so I didn't want any visual effects I didn't even really want the action sequences I didn't even want to deal with the wrestling or any of that <laughs> stuff because I knew it was going to be a pain in the ass I just wanted to you know work with dialogue and actors and that was sort of the goal was to find a piece that was an actor's piece and when I approached uh, Marissa and Mickey, it's like how, what you said. I was like, look, I just want you guys to be free. Yeah. There's going to be none of these. There was not any of these on set, yeah, which yeah, I'm yeah. sure you didn't have any of these yeah, on yeah. set either. Um, no video playback. And Did you not? No video playback. That That's was like cool. a big thing. I was like, I had, I had video playback on the final um, uh, fight scene. The big for fight the scene. two, three days to make sure with 2,000 people that the shots would cut. And yeah. I'm glad I did because a couple of times that, that cut didn't work and I had to reshoot it. But um, everything else was just like, let's just go for it. And, you know, there's no time. The, the reason we didn't have seats is because this is reality. Even though here we are with a film crew, everyone make believe this is real. And so I had a DP that made me wait five minutes for a setup. Yeah. So we were really just banging it out and 
It was great. It was liberating to do it that way.